Welcome back to part three of this series on loops. In this video, we'll introduce another loop structure, while loops. A while loop, just as surprising, uses the keyword while. The main difference between a while loop and a for loop is that the three elements, the initialization, continuation, and increment statements, are not in the same line. Instead, they're separated out, as we'll see shortly. However, they have the same exact behavior. The continuation condition is checked at the start of the loop, and if true, the loop body executes. If false, the loop terminates and the program continues. Here's the same loop from before that counts from 1 to 10 using a while loop instead. The initialization statement is done before the loop starts outside of the loop control structure. The while statement only contains the continuation condition. The increment is done inside the loop body itself. Because of this, care must be taken. The order that you write statements inside the loop body matters. The increment statement in a for loop is always executed at the end of the loop. As we've written it in this example, we get the same behavior, but if we wrote the increment statement at the top of the loop body, we'd get very different results. Here's our code visualization tool again. The variable i is initialized before the loop begins. It's less than or equal to 10, so the loop body executes. We print it out and increment it. On the last iteration, i has a value of 10, which is less than or equal to 10, so the loop body executes. The value of i after the loop terminates is 11. Let's change this code to demonstrate what happens when you write things out of order. Here I've rewritten it so that the increment is done before the print statement. Because the increment is done before the print statement, the first number printed will not be 1. Instead, it'll be 2. Likewise, the last number to be printed will be 11. This is because, again, the increment happens at the start of the loop instead of at the end. So why do we have different loop control structures? In fact, any for loop can be rewritten as a while loop and vice versa. Strictly speaking, we only need one. As with the increment operators, it comes down to syntactic sugar. Having more than one loop structure provides more flexibility and variety to a programming language. In practice, you'll use for loops and while loops in different contexts, depending on which feels more natural. For loops are generally used when the number of iterations is known up front. Iterating an index variable from 1 to 10, or from 0 up to some variable value n, for example, you know how many times you're going to execute that loop. While loops are generally used when the number of iterations is not known up front. Instead, the number of iterations could vary depending on the variable values. To illustrate this, consider the following problem of normalizing a number in scientific notation. A number is normalized if it lies between 1 inclusive and 10 exclusive. For example, with 89237.49283, it would be normalized to 8.9 times 10 to the fourth. 321.321 would be normalized to 3 0.21321 times 10 to the second. Numbers less than zero would be normalized upwards with a negative exponent. The number of times that we divide or multiply to normalize it would depend on the magnitude of the number. As an exercise, let's write some code that does just that. Here I'm using that online tool REPL again. First, let's create a variable to hold a value to actually normalize.
Now we're going to use a while loop. While the value stored in x is greater than 10, then we'll want to divide it by 10 in order to shift the decimal point over. Here again is a perfect opportunity to use our new operators. Now let's print it out. For this example, it works. Let's also add additional support to keep track of the exponent. To do that, I'll establish a counter variable. I initialize it to zero because if the number is already normalized, then we actually don't shift the decimal point and it would be multiplied by 10 to the zero, which is just one. Every time we divide by 10, we'll increment our counter. and that matches our result from before. Let's try it with another value. That also works. Let's try it with our last value. This failed to normalize. That's because we didn't think of the other direction. What if the number is already less than one? We need to normalize it by shifting the decimal point to the right or multiplying by 10. In this case, we decrement our counter to get negative exponents and that matches our result from before. We did these two while loops separately because they do two different things. Either a number is going to be larger than 10, or it's going to be less than one, or it's going to lie between them, in which case it's normalized already, and neither one of these loops will actually execute. However, there is one corner case that we didn't consider. What happens when we try to normalize zero? Here we're stuck in an infinite loop. X is not greater than 10, so it's not the first loop, but X is less than one, so the second loop executes. But every time we multiply zero by 10, we never get anywhere. We'll cover how to kill infinite loops here shortly.